So in the presentation I'm going to give on Fourier series, I'll introduce it. I'll show the rectangular Fourier series synthesis and decomposition, the complex Fourier series conversions and Parseval's theorem. All right, there are many references for this work. I've shown you one. Uh, there are many lecturers who would presented this topic probably a thousand times and a thousand books, but you know, the, here's my presentation. Fourier did this work in the early 1800s. It's published, it's really 19th century mathematics. Presentations of material, as I said, are needed in both the time domain and frequency domain. The Fourier series is continuous in time, it's periodic in time, but it's discrete in frequency. All signals that are periodic with period T may be decomposed into the sum of sinusoids. And here I'm interested in physically realizable signals. <clears throat> and the example that I'm going to work through is a square wave. If the amplitudes go from plus one to minus one, so from plus one it, from time zero to time T over two, it's plus one, from time T over two to T it's minus one. The period is T. I'm going to use, for example, T equal to one millisecond corresponding to a frequency F equals one over T of one kilohertz. Mathematically, you could write F of T, F sub capital T of T as one from time zero and including zero up to time T over two, which is this portion, and minus one for times t capital T over 2 to T. And the equality and inequality I put here correspond to what's shown in the diagram. The signal is periodic, so F sub capital T of T is equal to F sub capital T of T plus capital T, no matter what value of T you chose. The points at the edges, up here it was drawn for a situation like this with minus one and one, but you could have the points at the edges to be in the middle at a zero, meaning this point instead of being at T equals zero, instead of it being amplitude one, it could be amplitude zero. It won't be significant in terms of integrals or energy content. And so I might, a lot of the times, I might even just draw it as an edge like that. <clears throat> so with this square wave, F sub capital T of T versus T with period T, amplitude plus one, minus one, one millisecond, one kilohertz, then this, for, this periodic signal can be decomposed into the sum of sinusoids. And I sh I've shown two here. A sinusoid at a frequency of one kilohertz and a sinusoid at a frequency of three kilohertz. The amplitude of this sinusoid, or in, in fact, sine wave, as opposed to a cos, the amplitude here is around 1.3. The amplitude of the three kilohertz sine wave is around 0.4. If you were to add up F1 and F2 like this, then you get a sine wave like this, it should be symmetric, which just my drawing is a little it's a little sloppy, but when you add up F1 and F2, you get you get this waveform shown here. Both frequencies are present here. This 1.3 is really approximately 4 over pi, and this 0.4 is really approximately 4 over 3 pi. But two of two of the signals, the fundamental frequency and the second harmonic, if this is one kilohertz, the first harmonic is two kilohertz, the second harmonic is three kilohertz, but that's that notation can be confusing. So if the fundamental frequency is one kilohertz, I will call this the three kilohertz harmonic. If you add up the one kilohertz and three kilohertz signals, you get this shape. If you had a, a fifth if you had a, another 
frequency at five kilohertz, then it and added it would be a little little lower in amplitude. And when you add it up a one kilohertz, three kilohertz, and five kilohertz, it would start to look even more like a square wave, and you would just continue. There for this this particular square wave, there is no two kilohertz, there is no four kilohertz component. As to what where this came from, well, that comes out of the mathematics, which I'll show here. The point of this is that the periodic signal can be represented as the sum of sinusoids. Now, for that example on the previous page, the time domain is this waveform, plus one to minus one, f of t versus t, t is one millisecond. The corresponding frequency domain for that waveform is f equals one kilohertz. For f equals one kilohertz, there are these coefficients, the A coefficients, which you'll see later, but here the A, they're really the sine, excuse me, the cosine coefficients and the Bs are the sine coefficients. But all the A's are zero. In fact, A zero equals zero is the DC value. What's the DC value of this? Well, it's zero, the average value. So all these A coefficients are zero. A zero, A one is zero, A two is zero, and so on. This is a frequency index N. The B coefficients are shown here. There is no B0 coefficient. There, it, the, the cosine coefficients, excuse me, the sine coefficients start at B equals one, at, at B1. And so B1 is four over pi, B2 is zero, B3 is four over pi, B4 is zero, B5 is four over five pi, pardon me, B3, three over, four over three pi, B5, four over five pi. The B1 amplitude 4 over pi, or approximately 1.3, <clears throat> corresponds to the 1 kilohertz sine wave. B3 corresponds to the 3 kilohertz sine wave. Given the coefficients from one domain, those in the other domain can be found. They call them duals. There's a time frequency duality. If you have this waveform, you can find these coefficients, the A's and B's and the fundamental frequency. If you have these coefficients and the fundamental frequency, you can find the time domain waveform. <clears throat> you can go back and forth. If you have the time domain waveform, the process of finding the frequency domain coefficients is called decomposition. If you have the frequency domain coefficients, the process of generating the time domain waveform is called synthesis. Mathematically, more details are shown here now. <clears throat> I want to derive how we found that B1 coefficient, the four over pi. And it's a derivation of this formula, B1 equals two over pi, the integral from zero to T, F sub capital T of T sine two pi, 1t over capital T dt. The one is because it's the n equals one coefficient. But to derive that in general, we would have to look at the general representation of a periodic signal being expressed by the sum of sinusoids. And that's shown here. This is A0 a1 cos 2 pi f1 t over t plus b1 sine 2 pi f 2 pi 1 t over t plus a2 cos 2 pi 2 t over t plus b2 sine 2 pi oh there's an error here it should be a 2 right there 2 t over t and so on there's cosines there's sines you would need both an alternative is an alternative is actually a Fourier series where you have a single sinusoid and a phase shift, a polar form, but you know the, the either a sine or a cosine is sufficient. Or excuse me, having the sines and cosines themselves and weightings between them would be sufficient. And at that a zero is the DC value. It's usually associated with the a coefficients, and there's no b zero coefficient. This is in general the synthesis where we take these A's and B coefficients, we take capital T 
and we can use those to generate the waveform f of t. However, to solve for b1, multiplying all terms by sine 2 pi 1 t over t and integrating from 0 to 2 pi gives the following. So I just multiply by sine 2 pi 1 t over t, all terms, sine 2 pi 1 t over t, sine 2 pi 1 t over t, sine 2 pi 1 t over t. Then integrate from 0 to 2 pi, everything. By trigonometric identities and integration, there are only two non-zero terms. <clears throat> It'll be This will be a non-zero term, and this B1 will be a non-zero term, where you see two identical sine waves multiplied together. The other terms will be zero if you take the time to work out the integrations, use trig identities and integration. You might be able to see it more easily, say, with a sinusoid. If you find the area under a sinusoid with some weight over one period, it's going to be zero. And the same goes on with some of the other terms, the cos multiplied by a sine. Um, um, in fact, I made the same mistake here. There should be a two right there. These are the, this is the first frequency a1, b1, a2, b2, but when we get into the second, the n equals 2 harmonic, that should be a 2 up here, and there should be a 2 here, and so on. But all those integrals will be 0 if you take the time to work them out. So I've repeated that here. All those integrals are 0 except these two. <clears throat> Going from this line to this line, well, this is the same on the left. This is just a trig trigonometric identity. Sine squared is 1 minus cos, 2 times the frequency, 2 pi 1 t over t divided by 2. Then separating that, you get two integrals. The integral from 0 to t of, a, of this constant is b1 over 2 just time, times t. And the integral of this will be zero. It's a double frequency. <clears throat> it's just a sinusoid. So the, the area under two periods of the sinusoid is zero. Or you could work it out. Going from this line to this line, rearranging it, then we get two over capital T, the integral from zero to capital T, F sub capital T of T, sine two pi one T over capital T to T, and that's the coefficient B1. If we work out that B1 coefficient for the square wave now, that same formula, B1 is 2 over capital T, the integral from 0 to T, F sub capital T of T, sine 2 pi 1 T over capital T dt. We work that out for this square wave. Well, <clears throat> the integral from 0 to T is the same as the integral 0 to T over 2, T over 2 to T, and the argument is, is the same in both. The third line has f of t, f sub capital T of t from 0 to t over 2 is just plus 1. That's this value up here. From t over 2, capital T over 2 to capital T, in this interval, the value is minus 1. And so, the derivative, uh, the integral of the cosine of the sine is shown here. It's a cosine. So the derivative of cos is minus sine. So, and by the chain rule, this would put out a minus, a, a factor of 2 over pi. And so the t over 2 pi cancels that out. So the integral of sine 2 pi t over capital T is what's in the square brackets here. And then that integral is evaluated between the definite limits of capital T over 2 and 0. Same is true with this integral. There's now minus 1 here because of this minus 1. Oops. So when we work out the integral of that sign, we get this evaluated between the limits capital T and capital T over 2. <clears throat> so on the next line, 
evaluating this at capital T, we get cos 2 pi over T, capital T over 2, and evaluating it at 0, we get a 0 here. This one <clears throat> evaluated at capital T is here, and evaluated it at capital T over 2 is here. Evaluating these cosines, the T's cancel here, so we're left with, and the 2's cancel, we're left with cos of pi. Cos of pi is minus 1. Something else, I brought the, I brought, I canceled the T's. There's a T, capital T here, a capital T here, capital T here. So those cancel each other out. The same is true here, the T's cancel each other out. I factored out 1 over pi from all the expressions. So there's a 1 over pi in front, because there's a pi in the denominator here. There's a 2 common here, 2 and 2. Uh, two here, or two here, two here, two here. The, so the twos are canceled out and left with one over pi. So cos of pi is minus one. Cos of zero is one, but there's a minus sign here, so that's why there's a minus sign here. Cos of two pi is one. And then cos of capital T, the T's cancel, the 2's cancel. Cos of pi is minus 1. So this, these minuses turn into 2. This, these minuses turn into 2. We get 4 over pi when we're done working out this single coefficient, which is approximately 1.3. So in general, that rectangular form of Fourier series where T0 is a, some arbitrary or any real number. Capital T is the period. F sub capital T of T is A0, the sum from N equals 1 to infinity, AN cos 2 pi N T over capital T plus B sine 2 pi N T over capital T. Equation 1. This A coefficient is the DC value. You can work out the integral here. This is how you would find the A coefficient. Uh, a0 coefficient. The a n coefficients for 1, 2, 3, and so on are shown here. The b coefficients for 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on are shown here. These are, this is the same formula that was derived earlier in this lecture for b1, where n equals 1 was put in this expression. This is not an error in terms of there's a 2 here, a 2 here, and there's no 2 here. This is correct for the rectangular form of Fourier series. And I believe the next page moves into what I might consider relevant to the next lecture. So I'm gonna say again, if I were presenting this material in a lecture and doing all this writing, I would be done. So this material shown here is next lecture, the complex exponential Fourier series, Fourier series conversions from rectangular to complex form, and Parseval's theorem. Thank you.